Hello, my name is Dr. Liam Schubel, and welcome to another edition of Schubel Vision Elite Interviews, where today we'll be interviewing Dr. Tom Gilardi, the founder of Sherman College of Chiropractic, and I'm joined here with my friend Dr. Frankie Hahn and Dr. Judd O'Grady of the Schubel Vision Elite Team. Enjoy the interview. First, we lost the money for the building. And when students started coming in, they said, well, we want to see the building. I can show you the land, but I can't show you the building. I can show you the temporary quarters. Well, these are little offices. I said, I know, we're going to knock down the walls yet. <laughs> I said, what are you going to start in three weeks? I said, I'm hoping some of you will stick around and help <laughs> knock down these walls. <laughs> so Catherine got kind of ticked with us. I just love her. She's a good friend of mine. Both of us. And so Catherine said, I'm leaving, you know, you deceived us and whatever. So she left. And I thought she was gone forever. Yeah. She came in with a group. And then uh, a little later, uh, she came back before the opening day. She was back. So I changed my mind, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> I just love her. She just, uh, that, and that, oh, that voice. She's just beautiful. In the end, she didn't want to be left out, huh? Yeah, which yeah. was good. She's, yeah. she's great. At some point, you or the administration at Sherman College chose to be a part of the CCE. Uh, why, why was that decision made? When we organized the college, a chiropractor called me, uh, and he had been a vice president of Point Park College in Pennsylvania. He's a chiropractor, and uh, he graduated Lincoln College. And he said, I don't know very much about straight chiropractic, but he said, I'd like to learn about it. And he said, I've been up at this college as a vice president, I don't know, for some 10 or 15 years. So he said, I have a lot of administrative experience. I could contribute to the school and so on. So he came down. He was interviewed. And uh, I had him listen to Reggie's record, The Golden Facts of Life and Health, because I got called out on a house call at that time, or well, going back to my clinic. And uh, so when I came back, I asked him what he thought about the record, and he thought it was beautiful. He said, that's just wonderful. And he'd like to be. So I said, okay, fine. And he said, my son is getting ready to start college, so he could also come to the college and be a student. And his wife had some experience, and we put her someplace to work in the college. And the son actually was our biz first business manager. Hmm. He had some business background. He was keeping the books for the college. So th I have three in the family as employees and um, so on. But he wanted a contract. So we signed a three-year contract with him, which I never asked for a contract. I've been offered a contract, but I just don't like contracts. Uh, but I gave him the contract. Um, he received a phone call from a classmate of his from Florida, who was a chiropractic gynecologist in Florida, <laughs> and uh, said he was chairman of the CCE Commission on Accreditation, mm -hmm. and that if Sherman would sign up with him now, before they're trying to get this thing through the federal government, if we would sign up with them, then they would assure us we'd be approved. But now they had three levels of accreditate, you know, your correspondent status, candidate status, and accredited. Got it. And they did away with that. So that sounds pretty good. So we got the paperwork together, had it bundled up. I think it was labeled. And we said, no, wait a second. Let me call um, the president of Palmer, Quigley. Dave had a stroke and Quigley had taken over the school. So I called Quigley and he was a nephew of BJ's. So I said, look, this is the offer I had just made. And this, Hinson was his name, I believe, from Florida. Uh, and as I've got this offer that we could get approved now, I didn't even know what approval meant. So I 
looking back on it, it would not probably have been accredited status. So I said, what do you recommend? I don't want to hurt the, the straight movement. And he said, well, if you did this, I would understand. He said, but I would advise you, wait until it's over. After we think it's going to get federal recognition, then we're all going to meet. And we're going to have a meeting and decide where do we go. And maybe as a unit, we could go in as a unit and have some power that way. I said, I'm with you. So we put it up on the shelf. When they gained federal recognition, I went out to the meeting that they had their meeting that was in Chicago. And uh, I thought we we're going to sit down at a table, all the college presidents and so on. But we met at the Pickwick Hotel in Chicago in someone's bedroom. It was not even a suite. Hmm. We were sitting on dressers, on beds. We were sitting around this crowded room. I didn't feel like a college president. And I'm not <laughs> that egotistical, but <laughs> I, I, you could do better than that. And so then they started accusing Palmer. They said, you just didn't want to raise educational standards, and this would never have happened. And Palmer said the Clevelands couldn't make it. If we had, we didn't want to put them out of business. We need them in the profession. They have two schools and so on. Where would we be? And they kept accusing each other all around the room. So now what are we going to do? Everyone said, well, I don't know what the heck we're going to do. Let's just call quits and we'll all fill out an application and apply. Well, they didn't go in as any group. It was nuts. Mm -hmm. So we left and it says, okay, take that file down. It's only a few months old from uh, November December, something, and here it is, June. So we mailed it in. And so that's how we applied. Mm. And uh, one of the reasons were, too, the bill was in when we applied. I guess it was not, it was maybe a year later we applied. I, can't, I don't remember the timing on it. But they got the CCE only bill through the legislature in South Carolina, and we had to get it out. And, uh, but, and I went to the legislators, <clears throat> excuse me, and they were saying, why don't you apply to CCE, as they would never accept this. How do you know you haven't applied? And until you apply, that's always going to be a question. Mm -hmm. So we said, well, we would apply and we would make a sincere effort to get in. And uh, so they came down, they inspected us and they uh, Strauss, Joe Strauss says in the book that we that I wanted a good basic science program to impress the CCE. That's not true. I wanted mm -hmm. a good basic science program. Right. And uh, and he says, when they came down, he says, the one thing they got turned down on was basic sciences. Basic sciences was never a problem. They never mentioned basic sciences. They mentioned that we weren't doing human dissection. Well, the New York College had candidate status, middle of the road, and they were doing primate dissection. Mm. Texas College was fully accredited, and they weren't doing human dissection. Mm. So I said, okay. I had been already trying to get human dissection, but that was controlled by the medical sure. establishment. When I went back and showed them that what CC turned us down on, one of the legislators said, I'm on the board of a medical school here. I'll get you cadavers. So we got human cadavers out of it uh. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that worked to the benefit. The one thing it said, every it was just a little minutia. We could have cleaned it all up. But one statement, a lack of commitment to training primary health care providers within the intent of the CCE standards. That's exact quote. And it was so broad within the, I said, we really don't have a commitment within the intent of those standards. The, the standards are meant to make you a medical doctor, right. a lousy one, but a medical doctor. So uh, I said, we can't go back and reapply. And that was the end of that. Hmm. Hmm. And Sid always made the idea, Sherman was the first school to apply. 
the first uh, school after they got accredited. He's it's in writing. He's, yeah. he said that Sherman was, and now they're complaining about CC, but yet they were the first school. Well, we were, I guess. I don't know, but we already had the whole thing filled out before they ever got approved, and we held up on it <laughs> <laughs> to to stay unified to, with the straight movement. What I thought was straight yeah. movement. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Do you believe that was a wise decision to to apply for CC accreditation? We had to. Yeah. Because the legislators were saying, you're just assuming that they won't do it and, and you can't go. We're not going to yeah. buy that. So Got it. I thought we had to. Mm -hmm. Even my lobbyist said, you know, and he was a big wig up in, in the legislature till he, re he didn't retire, but he's an attorney. He left there. And so he knew what he was talking about. He knew the legislature. They were trying to create primary care physicians. Your goal was to try to create uh, doctors of chiropractic that were qu highly qualified in their mission of detection, analysis, and correction of vertebral subluxation. So there was kind of two different ideas of what chiropractic was about. One was chiropractors are primary care physician. That was, it seemed to be the CCE standpoint. And Sherman College had a point of view that chiropractors were experts in the detection, analysis, and correction of vertebral subluxation. And the science, philosophy, and art taught at Sherman College made sure that that quality of practitioner was top level, but CCE couldn't measure that. That, that's, that mm -hmm. was our argument, yes. Mm -hmm. At the very simplest level of it is a profession has an infrastructure. Your licensing boards, your testing agencies, your accrediting agencies, your colleges, your associations, and your journals, and things of that nature. So they have a cartel that said, okay, we've got to cover all these bases if we're going to control the profession, but particularly the accreditation. So the ACA sees, and they joined, they formed the ACA to train medical doctors, no matter what you think. And they actually don't believe that there is any benefit in correcting a subluxation. If you want to use it, if you want to pray over your patient, do whatever you want, but there's no benefit in it. And subluxations don't exist. They just tell you. Do you know, this is amazing. CCE does not look at your subluxation program at all. They have no standards for how you locate or how you analyze or how you adjust the subluxation. No standards at all. We're interested in, is there bone pathology any place in the body? And particularly if you're moving bones, then you ought to say there's no pathology. But they have no standard. They go into a college and they say, you're certified. And specialized accreditation means good practice in the field. That's whether it be law or whatever it is, it only means good practice in the field. Uh, not that the person's going to be good practice in the field, that's a licensing board, but it means that they've been educated as the good practice in the field. Mm -hmm. That's the college. Um, and they, but now we wrote a letter, our little group of uh, the sustainability committee with um, Serge Satre, you know, from. Mm -hmm. Georgia, they wrote a letter to the CCE and said, we would like to see CCE do a better job or do, a, do a, at least look at the subluxation portion. And they said, we don't deal with sublux, that's in writing. Mm -hmm. We don't deal with subluxations. Yeah. But it is an option. If the college wants to teach it, it could teach it. Like you can teach knitting or piano playing if you want. Right. So that's the huge challenge, right? Is that the CCE is not really um, accrediting per se a chiropractic college because you can do anything in the in the school uh, other than chiropractic, and you'll receive accreditation. Uh, yes. You know, within certain uh, standards. But you, but you must have the. Uh, the tools, I can't remember how they said, the skills 
You must have the knowledge, skills, and attitude. Those are the three mm. things. The knowledge, skills, and attitudes to practice as a primary health care provider. So if you say anything against primary health care, or this is not the best way to practice, uh, or that our purpose really is to adjust subluxations, that's not the attitude. Got it. And you get turned down for that. Yeah. So, uh, and it's still the exact same way. Yeah, but and the thing about it is I want to clarify yeah. this. How many of us would really want to see CCE looking at the subluxation? Because mm -hmm. they don't know anything about it. Right. Yeah. So I don't want them doing it. Mm -hmm. But we have a program available that could certify the subluxation portion of a college's curriculum. And if we're going to have a profession, we have got to build our infrastructure. If we can't visualize someday having our own testing agencies, our own National Board of Chiropractic uh, of, uh, Licensing Boards, if we can't get our own agencies, we've got to divide. Mm -hmm. We're never going to exist for many more years. Uh, and we have a certification agency, and they've certified the practitioners. They certify only practitioners in several different places, but Argentina particularly. And they have great criteria. And they said, look, we're not going to tell you what program you should have. Just explain the program if it's logical and you are doing it. You are teaching it well. You know, and it's appropriate for a chiropractic profession. We can have very varied technique programs in our colleges. It's not, you don't have to teach up a circle at all. You can right. teach, you know, just show us some rationale for what you're doing. And uh, we can't get a single college. Because they're afraid to offend CC. Right. Yeah, there's a, what do they call that, a uh, silencing effect or a, you know, the, and nobody wants to step forward with anything outside because that attitude is being held over them, right? As, as soon as you try to do anything other than what the party line is, then you don't have the proper attitude towards primary uh, health care. No. Uh, but there's no reason how CC could ever challenge a school. They might be a little tougher on your basic science program yeah. or something else, but uh, they can't challenge you for t having your program certified. They used to say you couldn't do it. You wow. couldn't have two certifications. Now the courts have ruled, not in their case, but it, they're well aware the courts have now said you can't stop a college from having other certifications than your own. Well, and so the, the CCE has... Um, put certain colleges in positions that, that they were almost going under. You know, Life University had that issue uh, with CCE. Sherman College had issues with CCE. Other schools as well had issues with CCE. So there's a, kind of a chilling effect going on is that nobody really wants to step out of line because the understanding is that they could be shut down a, as a result of the CCE finding them and not having the proper attitude. And you primary. can't get colleges to cooperate mm -hmm. among you can't you know the other two I think is possibly life and Sherman. Yeah. Life doesn't want anything to do with the program and so on. But what I do know is that weakness never saves anybody's skin. Got it. You know what I mean? And if you don't keep challenging them all the time, I think Sherman got a reputation that I said, we're willing, you know, if we're gonna lose everything. But somebody's going to go with us. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're yeah. going to stay in the fight. Yeah. And we'll fight you right to the very end. Mm -hmm. And I could tell you one time, when I went back to Sherman, I retired. And then they asked me if I'd go back for a couple of years. They said two years, which that's all I did. I went back for two years. And then uh, that the CC is considering making physical therapy mandatory. They had two hearings on it. This is the last hearing, and it's going to be approved. There's nothing could come of it. I said, well, we may lose, but let's give it our best shot. So I asked Myron. I said, Myron, call Clum in California. And I know they teach physical therapy, but they have to because of the state law. But just that it should be optional. See if he'd come out and testify to that effect. And he said, yes, he would. And I really give Clum a lot of credit because I pick on him a heck of a lot and a lot of issues, but he was really good to us that time. So we're in 
and I took Schwartzbauer out with me and uh, Bob Irwin and some of the other, I don't know if Bob Irwin was one of them, but we took several out that because the board said anyone who potentially might be president, bring them out with you. And uh, so Clusterith went out with me and so on. So we get out there and they bring up the issue. And I said my part and everyone said their part. And then Clum said, you see Gilardi over there. He's getting ready to sue you again. He says, and we have to, you assess all the colleges because that other lawsuit cost them over a million dollars. Uh, is And we're getting going broke trying to pay all these assessments. And I don't see why you can't let that stay optional. Hmm. So uh, everyone kept chipping away at it a little bit, but not getting very far. But when he said, they're going to sue you, and I'm tired of paying these assessments. Mm -hmm. They said it's a dead issue. They'll never come up again, and you're out of here. Mm -hmm. So I think strength, I wasn't even thinking about suing them at the time. Yeah. I was just, and I wasn't even threatening them. I never even threatened them. I just said it's, it's a stupid idea. Mm -hmm. And uh, then what happened at Sherman was the regional accrediting agency comes up that looks at the administration of the school and the funding, the, the books and everything else has no business into the curriculum. And they said, the students are complaining because there's no physical therapy. Well, all you have to do to sell an association, they did this to us before, mm -hmm. said, look, we want to be honest with the students coming in, absolutely honest. We think we are being honest. We advise them before they get here. But if you see how we could improve our honesty, if you want to write some letter that they should have before they are entered the school, mm -hmm. fine. But you have no business telling us what to be teaching. Right. But no one stood up to them mm. and they caved in. And so now the school has teaches physical therapy. Yeah. It's nuts. But I'll tell you, the only way we're ever going to win, and I don't know if we ever will win, but as I said, good center to the universe is there forever is you have to have a long-range strategy of what is the ideal situation. When we designed our home, said, what is the ideal home? Okay, we can't afford the ideal. Let's get back to it. <laughs> we did Sherman College. Here's the ideal. Now let's get it back to where we are. Oh, yeah. But you need an ideal of where this profession is going. And then say, well, let's get to work on it and start chipping away at it what we need, but we don't have an infrastructure. That's horrible. So, yeah. yeah, and again, I think the, the mindset has been just survival. It's been, hey, let's just not get, uh, what's our goal? Let's just not get shut down by the CCE. That's been the goal, right? And, and let's just stay off their radar. That's been the goal. And your suggestion is that uh, we should really know where we want to go, what is ideal, and we should be continually pushing that. We, uh, part of our our responsibilities to continue moving the puck forward, uh, you know, yeah. in spite of that might be uncomfortable. Absolutely. And as a thing, the high statement says, tread the mystical way with practical feet. So maybe you can't do everything at once and don't try because you're just going to be too thin and you're going to go under. Yeah. But at least have a long range plan. Got it. And they have a long range plan. They it's sure do. them 50 years to get yeah. where they are, to, are today, right. but they're still planned. Yes. They want to, do away with all adjusting of the spine right. mm -hmm. and they want to be full. And if we don't have a plan available, uh, I just can't see that. I mean, you know, we're dead. Makes a lot of sense. Looking back, would you have uh, sued the, the CCE, Sid Williams, uh, the NBCE? Would you have uh, done a lawsuit? In, uh, oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. I mean, uh, we did not sue them to put them through an expense. Mm -hmm. uh, but what they went through in time and money and labor and everything else, yeah. that quieted them down. They, they didn't put physical therapy in because they went through that experience, that mm -hmm. painful experience. The other thing is we went through their files. They went through our files too. And we found a heck of a lot of stuff in their files that fueled other investigations, mm -hmm. the Department of Ed took us more as a joke 
until after that lawsuit, they saw some of what was learned in that lawsuit, mm -hmm. and they took us more seriously. And they said to they said to CCE that we we'll recommend you sit down and negotiate with those people. Mm. You know uh, mm -hmm. that that lawsuit. I was looking at the Marjorie Webster lawsuit that took place, a famous lawsuit. They lost that lawsuit, but they changed education forever. The point that they were making was a valid point, and all of, everyone caught on to what it was, and legislation started changing and so forth. Out of the lawsuit, they lost. Mm -hmm. So, all right, you need a break? No. Okay. If you're getting tired, young man, go ahead. <laughs> 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 All right, let's talk about BJ Palmer. Okay. All right. Well, we hope you enjoyed that interview with the founder of Sherman College, Dr. Tom Gilardi. This is Dr. Liam Schubel signing off with my good friends, Dr. Frankie Hahn and Dr. Judd O'Grady. And we'll see you next time on the Schubel Vision Elite exclusive interview.